in the world of FPV or, or uh, UAV systems, there's a lot of discussions about the electronics and the controllability, the return to home functions, and all these neat things you can do. A company that's been in the forefront of that since the beginning is the Eagle Tree Systems, and we're here with John Fernandez, who's a product support specialist, to talk about a couple of products in particular, the uh, Guardian and also the Vector. Mm -hmm. Now, we've, we've watched your products evolve over the years as well, John, and it seems like we're getting more compact, more features built into smaller space, right. and a lot more integration as well. Mm -hmm. And looking at the Vector system, it's pretty much every, they have a little cool little diagram here, shows pretty much every type of wing. You've got multi-rotor, you've got uh, fixed wing applications. Tell us a little bit about the Vector and what the thought process was and, and what we're now looking at with the uh, complete system. All right. Well, we took some of our best technology from all of our products and put it into this. We have technology from the OSD Pro, the data recorder, the uh, Guardian stabilizer all in one, and then we added a lot of new features to it. So basically, when you get the Vector, you're getting the Guardian technology in it for the stabilization. You're getting our OSD Pro technology for the on-screen display, plus okay. it's in color, which the OSD Pro doesn't do. Um, comes with a GPS, compass built in, voltage regulator, uh, all, everything you need to get up and running right away in one package as opposed to having to add on different things. All different pieces, right. yeah. And that was one thing that was a challenge before because it just wasn't there yet. The right. technology wasn't all unified and integrated. We had to buy pieces here, there, and there right. to get everything to connect together. And when that when that was released, uh, some of that technology wasn't available yet. So as mm -hmm. it became available, we made add-ons for it and made it available and upgraded our firmware and made it available for people that already had the original product. Okay. So now that we've got all that worked mm -hmm. out and, and specialized and tweaked, it's all in one package now. Okay. Now with the Vector at a real high level, you've got on-screen display, you said GPS. Um, as far as, as capabilities, uh, return to home, a lot of more autonomous functions right. built into the Vector right. than what you've previously carried. Right. Well, a big a big difference is that it does support multi-rotor, which okay. the yep. OSD Pro data logger did not, uh, or the e-logger. But it does support multi-rotor or fixed wing right out of the package. Okay. And there's a lot of configurability for that. Um, you can, for your return to home, for example, you can set the parameters you want it to return to home at. Uh, you can have it for a multi-copter land if you want, or just hover when it comes back. Really? Okay. And you can do that by command or by uh, fail-safe. So you can have it as a fail-safe if you lose signal or something. And, or you could command it any time you want to do that. See, that, yeah, that's really or the practical. Right. Now, when we talk about the capabilities of the Vector being kind of at the, at the large end of things, full, right. full spectrum capabilities. Right. You also have another product called the Guardian, right. and there's a lot of chatter about that on the on the news groups, mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, forum boards and stuff. And uh, the cool thing about the Guardian being, we've got the stabilization. We have some of those benefits we see some manufacturers mm -hmm. having integrated into their receivers. Right. You guys have it as a standalone, so right. you can use your own radio equipment. Can you tell us a little bit about the Guardian? Get everybody familiar with what it does. Yeah, the Guardian basically is can interface with any of the current um, receivers and control systems out there right mm -hmm. now. It just has standard servo plugs, standard connections. You plug it in, you put it in between your receiver and your servos on your plane. It'll work pretty much on any plane. Uh, and it, it has basically two modes, 2D and 3D, which don't necessarily mean if you want to do 3D, you go to 3D mode or 2D mode. Uh, 2D mode is basically auto leveling. It okay. gives you a good fail back or a, a fail safe if you have a problem and you lose orientation or for whatever reason somebody new is learning how to fly. Mm -hmm. It's always going to go back to level flight when you release the sticks. Okay. So it's a good fail safe and a good recovery setup. 3D is going to hold the orientation you put it into. So if you're learning a new maneuver and, uh, of hovering or a high harrier, high harrier or knife edge, it's going to really help you learn that. Okay. And give you a lot more confidence to try it, and uh, you know have a little more confidence, and not be worried as much about risking your airplane. Now, landing and taking off in 3D mode is okay. Works great. Now, in 2D mode, we talked about not the best thing. Get it up in the uh, air, it's and a, then... it's personal preference. A lot of guys uh, use it in both modes. Okay. I like 3D mode better because it holds the orientation you put it into. Mm -hmm. As you start to release the sticks, it's still going to hold that orientation. 2D mode, as you start to release sticks, it's going to try to level off a little bit more. And if you don't have enough altitude, it can be concerning. But sure. uh, again, it's personal preference. There's guys doing it in both. I prefer 3D mode for landing and takeoff, but okay. you can do it either way. A couple of guidelines with the Guardian that you've I've, I've run across in the in the uh, tutorials and some other mentionings and postings. Uh, some things you want to you want to make sure you set up properly. Uh, in fact, you and I talked about it briefly over the phone. Uh, establishing your level wing orientation, right. things right. like that. Can you discuss those couple quick tips there? Yeah, there's a few things that you really need to do when you're setting up the Guardian. Of course, you need to make sure your transmitter is making your control surfaces move the correct direction. Mm -hmm. uh, then you need to make sure that the Guardian's control is moving the correct direction. In other words, when you move the plane around, you want it to counteract you know, what, what's happening mm -hmm. with the control surfaces. Once you get those set, then you'll want to fly the plane and trim it with the Guardian off. 
you, just need, you need to make sure that the airframe's capable of flying and is set up correctly, you have a good CG. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Guardian is so good, it can mask some of those problems if you do it without setting the plane up first. So you, know, you get the CG right, fly the plane, trim it, you bring it down, then you set level flight, you put the plane level, and there's a, a, a mode switch uh, operation that you do that teaches the Guardian, okay, that's level flight, and that's the trim that needs to be in it, okay. normal flying. After that, then you're just going to work on flying it with the different gain settings and get it so you don't have too much gain and uh, make sure that's tuned correctly for the type of flying you're going to do. After that, you don't have to do that every time. That's done. You shouldn't have to reset level flight or trims unless you make a change to the airframe. So okay. that's pretty much done for the rest of your flying. A couple of things I had asked you when I originally checked into the Guardian. Um, digital or analog servos. Works with both out of the box. Maximum amperage of the Guardian. Because since it sits between your receiver and your servos uh, for those control services that are taken care of, like your elevator aileron and your, and your rudder, um, it's going to absorb uh, right. based on a conventional wiring right. into the Guardian, out of the Guardian. It's right. going to take all of that load handling off the servo. So right. Uh, maximum five amps. Five amps. If you're going to be close to that or over that, we have instructions in the manual how to uh, apply uh, additional power handling capability. You basically just run a Y from Wire your power. Wire on both sides right. of it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's not all running through the Guardian. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, Guardian and Vector, fully available. Uh, information can be found on the eagletreesystems.com website. Right, and we also have our Facebook page. It's linked from our website. We okay. keep updated. And I noticed the number of uh, YouTube videos, too. They yep. kind of talk about it and show some of the details. We do. We have, uh, we have a setup, full setup video for the Guardian. Mm -hmm. Shows installation tuning. We also have some on uh, captured video from the FPV perspective of the Vector showing uh, how it looks and how it performs. Okay. And there's tons of uh, customer videos out there and and stuff showing both of them. Uh, our beta testers are still testing the, the vector, so there's, they're posting some information, especially on our RC Group's website mm -hmm. and our thread, and uh, a lot of customer videos on the Guardian as well. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, John. I appreciate it. As always, you guys seem to be coming out with more and more interesting products in that FPV on-screen display arena. Right. So, yep. And seeing it minimized and simplified for us is great. Yep, and we're already working on the next best thing. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure you are. Stay right. tuned. Thanks a lot. Yep.